Want to make drums like this? Let's do it. Links for all the plugins that I use in this video will be in the description. So let's start out of our kick. I'm just going to make a basic pattern here. That classic drum and bass kick pattern. But we can make it even more punchy and tame that transient a bit with a filter sweep. The reason I'm doing this is if we have too much top end on the kick, it will interact with the hat and sound less cohesive. I'm also going to add a little curved fade to the start of the kick to once again help control the transient and help us achieve a more glued feel simply by programming without the use of compression. Let's start with this basic hat pattern and then we'll EQ out the lows. For that humanistic feel, I'm going to move these slightly off grid and vary the gain and fine tuning. Now I'm going to duplicate these for eighth notes, turn the channel down slightly and use Lifeline Console for a lo-fi feel. So now let's move on to the tricky part, the snare. We're going to want to do some layering here and we want to use some parts that complement each other. Rim shots have a great transient, claps have a great bright body and snares are somewhere in between the two. I'm going to grab this rim and this snare and send the output to the same bus. We'll EQ the lows out. And now we can use a noise gate on this bus to make the two layers sound as one. Sonox's Oxford drum gate is unreal for this. It sounds much tighter instantly. We'll do some clipping now to make it poke out a bit more. Let's bring the ceiling down so it kisses the tops. We'll turn up the drive a little. We'll also turn up the mix of the soft clipper. Now, if we gain match with a boost to the output, you'll hear it pops to the front of the mix more thanks to the subtle distortion. So you can see with it turned on and off, it's hitting at minus 4.8. But with the clipper on, it does sound a lot more punchy. We can also add an extra snare off grid at the end of every few bars to create a rolling feel. Now we can send our snare to a short reverb and give it a bit more of a natural feeling. We'll also grab some ghost note snares to help fill out the pattern. Once again, a little humanism is key here, so let's move it off grid and play with gain and tuning. Now for some rides. I'm going to make a simple eighth note pattern and then use gain and tuning once again to add humanism. It really is all about the subtle variations for DB drums. Now let's run it through trash for some saturation and a bit of extra grit. A good tip in the Loop Cloud app is that you can pre-make your patterns and then apply them to different one-shot samples. So for instance, I use this ride pattern all the time, so I can just scroll through and check it out with different samples. So now we have another ride variation, super easy. It's always fun to add foley elements to make your drums stand out a bit, so I'm going to add this paper tear that I found at Rhythmic Intervals and see if it sounds interesting. Now we just need some more tops to glue it all together. For post-processing, definitely experiment with subtle compression. Just kiss the tops and don't go for more than 3 dB or so of gain reduction. Between 10 to 30 milliseconds of attack time is good for DMB, and a fast release is key too, so around like 40 milliseconds or so. You might also try a little saturation. This is level matched, but it's punching through a load more. And once again, using Oxford drum gate, we can automate it on or off to get some super clean sounding transient shaping. So if we put it all together, we have. 